and be better at getting the overall sound, the professional sound that you need to win more auditions. Hey folks, it's Paul Carter here with EssentialVoiceOverTraining.com, where I help you start, build, and grow your voiceover career. Hey, if you're new here, first off, thanks so much for joining us. If you could, please click the subscribe button below so you always get notified of any of the new content, the new videos that we upload, so you can always be in on the know of the stuff that we're doing here. And just so you know too, I'm also going to provide links in the description below for all of the things that we talk about today so that you can go out and research them yourself and find out more information about all this great stuff. Today, we are going to talk about editing your audio file in Adobe Audition. Now, even if you're already familiar with Adobe Audition, but especially if you're a beginner, this is some really great stuff. I'm gonna show you how to edit the file, how to break it apart, how to do some things that are functions within Adobe Audition that are may, you may not know about. And uh, we're gonna really just give you a great idea about how you can edit these files quickly and be more efficient and be better at getting the overall sound, the professional sound that you need to win more auditions. So I recorded this a little bit earlier. This is really, it's a typical file. This is something that I would record day in and day out for my uh, auditions for voiceover. And I'm gonna walk you through the steps of what I do to edit these files, to make it sound the best that it can so that I'm, more than happy to send it out to clients when it when it's to its pristine sound. Here's the things I do. So when I start working with a file, the first thing that I do is go ahead and clear up my heads and tails. And what that means is you're going to take out any of the beginning and ending sounds that are are there so that there's there's no extraneous sounds in the file. So you want only your voice to be in the file. So let's jump to it. Here's what I do with the heads and tails. So first off, okay, let me show you what I mean by the heads and tails. Let's go ahead and listen to the beginning of this. Hey guys, this is Paul Carter here. So right there, you've got a, a you know mouth sound and a breath and that kind of thing. So we're gonna go to the very beginning and I use a command and my scroll wheel to scroll left or right to figure out where I'm gonna be in the file. So I, I place my cursor and I go left or right and that takes you right to the cursor and left or right of the cursor. So I go to the head and I go ahead and highlight the beginning of the file and click silence. There's a difference between silence and room tone. I'll get into room tone in a minute, but the reason I do silence at the beginning is because I want absolutely no sound to be there before my vocal starts. Okay, and now that I have a few seconds of silence here, I actually go ahead and delete most of it. I leave about, let's see how much that is. If you highlight it and look in the lower right-hand corner, it's about 0.2 seconds, so about you know, two tenths of a second of silence there. That's typical, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, depends. I don't want the vocal to jump right out at him when the file starts, when they click play, but I also don't want them to have to wait a very long time because they, Time spans are short. You've got about six to 10 seconds to capture their attention. So we've got the head on there that is in silent mode. I'm gonna go ahead and click the home button. That's gonna take me to the beginning of the file and I can listen to it and make sure I have the right amount of dead air before it starts. Hey guys, this is perfect. It doesn't jump out at them, but it gets right to it so they don't have to wait in case they're very impatient. Okay, let's go down and do the same with the tail. You can click the end button or you can you know, do the command scroll, like I said, and go back and forth, command scroll, Actually, scroll just takes you in and out of the file. Command scroll will take you to the spot of the file that your cursor is. So I go to the end of the file. Now I can do this at the beginning of the editing or at the end of the editing. Depends on you know what we're doing. But since we're talking heads and tails, I'm doing it at the beginning. And I find the ending, the last word that I say. Can win more auditions. And there it is. And there's a little breath there. So I'm going to go ahead and start right there. Highlight it. Right click in the, in the area that's highlighted and click silence. And then I'll go ahead and leave about, you know, again, uh, two tenths to five tenths, half, half a second to, of, of dead air at the end as well. Okay. So now you can see if you look at the file as a whole that my, my heads and tails are pristine, they're clear, they're ready to go. Now let's take a moment and talk about room tone. Now I already have a bit of room tone pre-saved into, into my buffer here. So let me go ahead and show you that. I'm going to click end. I'm going to hold command and scroll in on it for you. And then I'm going to uh, command V, which is pasting the room tone that's in my buffer. So everything that's in the buffer area here, this white area is my room tone. I'm going to click play and I want you to watch the lower bottom half of my screen, actually the, the lower bottom third and, and the half of the screen that is Adobe Audition. And you're going to see, you're going to see the meter. It's going to tell you where and like I said, that, that's about 0.459, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner, about, 0 .4, about half, a, half a second of room tone. Now watch my levels. 
Now, if you notice, they were very low. I, I have a, a very low room tone there, okay? So that is what you're gonna to use to cut and paste to do things like remove breaths, remove additional words that you don't want in there, anything that you don't want in the file, but you don't want it to go to dead air. Because here's the thing, if you have your voice talking and then it goes to exact zero silence of dead air, you, there, it's gonna be a very noticeable thing. What you want there instead is room tone. That's gonna to be where if you stop speaking, you're gonna still hear the ambience of the room, the ambience of the room, ambience, ambience, tomato, tomato. Uh, so so it, it sounds like you're still in the room with the person. It doesn't drop dead and it doesn't rise you know, uh, outrageously. So that's what room tone is. And I have it in my buffer saved so I can cut and paste immediately to remove my breaths or to remove additional words that I want removed, okay? Let's start from the top, okay? Let's go ahead and listen to it. Hey guys, this is Paul Carter here. I'm gonna do a quick recording of just my voice going into Adobe Audition so that I can give you a, there's a breath, right? So let's, uh, the cursor's where I need it to be. I'm gonna hold command, hit the scroll wheel. It's gonna go right to where I need it to be. What was the last word? Give you a bit of a run a bit of a rundown, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and start from the beginning of that word and go to the end of that, or, or you know, the end of the of the word to the beginning of the word. I'm gonna do a command V. What did that do? That pasted in my room tone. Now, if you listen back to it, as we will, give you a bit of a run, too much of a space, right? So you go back and delete a little. And so then I can give you a bit of a rundown on... There you go. Now it sounds natural. It flows between the words. It flows between the phrase. And there's a room tone there, not dead air and not uh, outrageously loud something that comes in and blasts you away. Give you a bit of a rundown on some tips on how to best edit and increase. Now this one here, uh, it, it's there's there's just a breath, okay? And it also has a little room tone in there that's probably got a bit of my vocal articulation without really having any noise to it. With this kind of thing, instead of pasting in room tone and and cutting it to, to, to fit, I go ahead and leave a little bit outside the breath. So let me show you this. I will find the breath and just highlight the breath itself, hit delete, and listen closely. Edit and increase your... So if you, if you listen closely and increase right? It, you want to make sure there's no glitches, no no funny noises in between and, inc and increase, okay? Introducing room tone or deleting a breath without doing room tone can cause things like glitches to occur. It, 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 there's little spots between the words that might have a little bit of noise in there. You have to make sure that you don't introduce those glitches, those artifacts that are, that are going to cause a pop or a, a weird sound, you know, click sound or that kind of thing. So listen very closely when you do this kind of stuff. To best edit and increase your editing speed and uh, improve the ways. So there you go. It sounds great. It's right there. I, I don't have to go back and, and change it or add anything more. It's already there. So let, let's hear this little spot that I heard as I was listening. Speed and uh, improve improve, right? So a lot of times you get a plosive sound, especially on P's and B's and D's and T's. There, there, there are words that, that come across loud. Now, the best thing to do is to properly train yourself so that you stop doing plosives yourself out of your mouth. They're not there. But as good as you can get, there's still going to occasionally be a plosive that comes through. Listen closely to the P here. Need and uh, improve. Improve. It's a little bit too loud. Now, Here's a, here's a pro tip here. You're going to get good at reading your edit, your, your WAV file, right? This is why I love Adobe Audition. It has an excellent representation of your WAV file like, like I've never seen, okay? There are others who, who have good representations. Adobe Audition is, is the top of the line. If you see this, listen to this. I'm going to hit repeat on this, right? It's got a pop, pop, pop. You can hear that pop there. Now, I've done this for so many years, I, I can see the WAV file and know immediately what, what I would need to fix. Now, again, 
I'm telling you this up front. You need to fix this in your performance, but occasionally these things are going to pop through. Okay. So let's, let's fix it without having to use any software or having to re-record. That's the key. You don't want to re-record this stuff, right? You, you're ready to move on. So let's hear it again and, and uh, improve. Right. Okay. So like I said, I've seen these wave files for years. Here's, here's where the culprit is. This little weird arch right here. Okay. There it, it, it ain't, whenever you do a P, you, again, you'll notice in the WAV file, if you're using Adobe Audition, there's going to be a little spike, okay? And it's going to have it, or a downward spike. So sometimes it goes both ways. If you notice here, it kind of has one both ways. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to delete that. But again, do not introduce additional artifacts by deleting these things. You want to be sure that that P sounds smooth now. So let's, let's listen to it again. And uh, improve. There you go. My P, my plosive is gone. I have not introduced any artifacts and it it, it just it's, it rolls smoothly. And uh, improve the ways that you edit your files so that when you're fine. So there's another breath. Let's go ahead and remove that one. This one, I'm going to introduce room tone. Files so that when because there's a little bit of a pause there. So I'm going to go ahead and a little room tone, but I put too, a little much, a little bit. We'll is that you that. edit your files so that when your files finally go out to your client, they are. There's another breath. Let's take it out. To your client, they are going to sound. Double check and make sure your timing's good. You don't want to delete too much space, right? To your client, they are going. That when your files finally go out to your client, they are going to sound the best that they can sound. And overall, there's another breath. I think I can leave the, the spot that's there. Sound the best that they can sound and overall give you a better opportunity so that you can win more auditions. Hey guys, this is, there it is. Let's go ahead and look at it now. Okay. So now you've got a file that has been debreathed, that has the, the tops and tails ready to go. And uh, some additional, you know, weird little editing pieces in there, like my P, my plosive that came across. There's another part that I did not show you. And that is whenever I make a mistake in my recording, I will do a, what that does is that creates a huge spike in, in the, the Adobe Audition file. Let's say that I'm talking to you about, right? Let's say I'm talking to you and I make a mistake, right? So what I'll do while I'm recording, I will go, Let's say I'm talking to you about, I'm, I'll do that. I'll see the spike and I'll know that from that sentence to the spike, I can go in and automatically delete it. That is a huge time saver, especially when you're doing a long form narration. You want to have some kind of process that you can use to immediately remove those without having to go back and check where you're at and reread it and, and check the script and then maybe have to re-record. This is one of those things that you can do that will eliminate and reduce your time to get this file out and, and, and into the client's hands. Here's a couple of more quick tips that you can use that'll help you improve your overall sound quality. Now, if you notice here, this is my straight in recording, okay? Uh, there, there's a couple of spikes here that I probably would come in and draw down just a little bit. Just kind of pull them down. You don't have to go crazy with this. Pull them down just a tad before you normalize, okay? That way, when you go to normalize, your, your peaks and, and are about the same. Let's say for instance, I left that in place and it was a huge spike on, on, on the screen. If I normalize that, it's gonna normalize the file downwards because it's gonna take it from the highest peak down to less than negative three dB. Now I've got a file that's right here. I'm gonna normalize it up to negative three dB. So it's a better normalization process. So I, I don't go in and make my spikes and my peaks exactly the same. Heck no, you don't want that. You want your dynamics. You don't want to lose your dynamics at all. But I pull them down, get them within a range so that I know that when I go to a negative 3 dB, it's going to get it you know, to the max that it can. So let's go ahead and highlight the file. Let's go up to favorites. And I'm going to choose a normalized to negative 3 dB. And boom, there it is. So it's normalized that in a good way that's going to give you the maximum sound that you can get to hand out to your client. Let's take a quick listen. Hey guys, this is Paul Carter here. I'm going to do a quick recording of notice my meter in the bottom middle of my screen. Just my voice going into Adobe Audition. So looks great, doesn't it? There's one thing I noticed in here. And again, this is from reading years and years and years of WAV files. I'm actually almost to the spot right here. So I'll go ahead and just scroll in a little bit. So that I can give you. 
give. There's another one. That, if you notice this right here, let me show you a, a bigger here. So that I can give. Now, you may not notice this right away because it looks similar to some of these others. Now, I notice it because it, it stands out to me. Like I said, I've been doing it for so many years. But this is a kind of a glottal click sound that uh, that didn't get caught, right? Uh, so that I can give. So I would usually come in here and do one of two things. You can come in and lower the volume on it, which is fine. You can just lower the gain. Or let me click Command Z. I come in here also occasionally highlight just the part and do a Command U. That is a heal function within Adobe Audition. What that's going to do is going to go in and pull that down and match it to the regions closest to it and, and give it a, an audio matching. So it's a really cool tool to do that, that'll pull that down and get rid of some of those additional weird little things that you may not have caught before. That I can give you. And the give still sounds good, but it pulled down that possible, um, it's not a plosive really, but it, it, it's a it's like a plosive in the sense that it would kind of, it, it, it can cause a clicking sound that may not be desirable in the track. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked it, don't forget to hit subscribe below so that you always get the notifications when we upload new videos. And hey, if you know anybody else that might benefit from this information, tag them and bring them along here so that we can show them this stuff and help them in their career as well. See you next time.